Hi, welcome back to my series of guitar lessons for complete beginners. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to play chords. In particular, we're going to look at the chords E minor and D6-9. These are the only two chords in the song A Horse With No Name by America. So hopefully you can remember from previous videos uh, how to hold the guitar and how important it is to be as relaxed as possible. The first chord we're going to look at is called E minor. And it's very similar to the shape you will have used if you saw my video on playing Smoke on the Water on two strings. It's basically this same shape, but you're transplanting it back one fret and up one string. So, you have your first finger behind the second fret of the A string, and then your second finger goes just beneath it, also on the second fret of the D string. So, one on the A, one on the D. Now you may notice here that it's virtually impossible to get both of your fingers up right close to the fret. And I don't know if you remembered from my previous uh, video, but that is usually the best place to play a single note. That's where you're going to get the nicest sound. The way I like to play this is with one finger clipping slightly over the other. But you'll notice, even then, my first finger is almost in the middle of the fret there. Try and retain that relaxed posture I talked about, so that really your hand's just hanging off the guitar really loosely. Try and press down as lightly as you can get away with while still making a sound. Remember that if you were to let go of the guitar with your left hand, it should just fall to your lap. It should be really nice and loose. My thumb is towards the top of the back of the guitar here. Hopefully you can see that, otherwise I will cut to a close-up later. So the first thing to do when playing your E minor chord, and you have your fingers down on the frets, is to pick each string in turn, just to check that they're all sounding. If you just strum the chord, like that, you might notice there's a bit, there's a bit of buzzing going on there, but sometimes you can disguise the mistakes, and really, you want to pick each string so that you can hear any mistakes and correct them. In particular, as I, as I mentioned, you want to have your fingers as close to the frets as possible. You also want to have your fingers on their tips as well. You see the way I'm bending my fingers round so that I'm playing the strings on the very tips of my fingers. Here you can see I have my fingers on their tips little gap between the bottom of my hand and the guitar. My fingers are quite close together with my second finger clipping over my first. I don't have my fingers separate like that. I have them both together up as close to the fret as I can get them. If you play them flat then you're likely to catch other strings that you don't want to and have this muted sound. So best to have them in this pointy fingertip position. Another thing to be wary of is trying to get your hand as straight as possible by bringing your wrist too far forward. You don't want to be shoving your wrist forward like this and then having putting strain on your wrist, putting strain on your arm. It's better just to hold it nice and relaxed in your hand. If I let go of the guitar here a second, so you can see that from my lap, I really am just approaching the guitar from a natural hand position.
For this type of chord as well, you don't really want the bottom part of your hand to be touching the guitar. So you're going to end up muting a string that you want to sound. So if you're hearing that muting, just make sure you've got a bit of a gap between your hand and the bottom of the guitar. So positioning your hand in the fist of your guitar like this leads to muting of the top E string. Instead, if you drop your hand like this, then that leaves your top E string to sound. Another thing you might encounter is a bit of fret buzz. This can happen if you're not pushing quite hard enough. Like that. So you just need to press a little bit harder. But as I said earlier, try not to press too hard. Um, it's surprising how likely you can get away uh, with pressing on the guitar. Um, also, you can get fret buzz if you play too far back this way, this end of the fret. If I, if I play there, you get these sort of nasty sounds. Or if you play on top of the fret, or you've come too, further up, too far over into the next fret, you can also cause it to make a sound that you don't want. A couple of pointers for you with the thumb as well. Um, I've seen some, seen some people with their thumb on its edge like this when they're playing chords. They think maybe that will help them. Like that. Or with their elbow stuck out. Your elbow wants to be nice and relaxed by the side. Your thumb wants to be kind of on, on its pad, really. On this part. Along the back of the neck. Some of the pressure that, you're, that, you, that you need to make the chord sound comes from squeezing the guitar neck between your thumb and your fingers. So that's the E minor chord. So exactly the same principles are going to apply for this chord D6-9. And to play that chord, you just have to move your first finger up one string and your second finger down one string. So really your fingers have just done the splits. E minor was both the second fret of the A and the D strings. D6-9 is the second fret of the bass E string, this one, and the G string, this one. get to your D6-9 chord, move your first finger up one string, your second finger down one string. As with the E minor chord, both fingers, first and second, should be as close to the fret as they can. Don't separate them, but rather keep them both close together. To avoid muting the A string, make sure your first finger is bent at the last joint, not flat like this. Keep play both fingers up on their tips. Be careful not to mute the top E string with your first finger. Try and leave a little gap again between the bottom of your hand and the guitar. Notice the position of the thumb on its pad, not on its side. Remember not to lean your wrist too far out like that, but instead keep your hand in a nice relaxed position. So, to summarise, um, the things to look out for when you're playing, the, uh, playing your chords, um, try and keep your fingers on their tips and as close to the fret as possible. Try to keep your thumb on its pad on the back of the guitar, applying pressure between thumbs and fingers. Everything should be relaxed, as I said, no pointy out elbows. Check that the underside of your hand there isn't touching the guitar, so you're not gripping it like this. Or you might get a muted string. In the next part of this video, I'm going to talk you through um, a chord diagram. So here you've got a typical chord diagram. This is the sort of thing you would find in a uh, guitar songbook um, or on the internet when you're looking for chords for a song. Um, it's basically a cross section of the guitar. So you can see the horizontal lines, those represent the frets on the guitar. 
and the vertical lines represent the strings. So the vertical lines from left to right are the strings E, A, D, G, B, E. So you had your thickest string on the left and your thin thinnest string on the right. Uh, remember that was Eddie ate dynamite, goodbye Eddie. Then the two round black circles just represent where you put your fingers on the fretboard. So you can see here you've got one finger on the uh, second fret of the A and the other finger on the second fret of the D. Also at the bottom you can see the numbers 1 and 2 giving you an indication of which finger to use for which string. But you don't always get that. So here you have a more typical chord diagram. Uh, this one is of the D6 add 9 chord, um, although really that should be called D6-9. A bit of a mistake there. Um, on this diagram you can see you've got your first finger on the second fret of the E string, while your second finger is on the second fret of the G string. A couple of things I didn't mention in the last diagram. Firstly, the double line at the top of the box, uh, that represents the nut on the guitar. That's the solid strip you have at the top of the guitar just before the frets start. Also, I should point out that the dots are often written in the middle of the diagram. This is purely for clarity's sake. Uh, you should still always be positioning your fingers as close up to the frets as you can, not in the middle. Uh, in the next video I'm going to be looking at a couple of exercises to help you start moving between these chords. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please click on the like button or subscribe to me. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comments box below. Um, or you can see me for a Skype lesson for free. Um, otherwise, I shall see you next time. Bye.